there arose a division among the people. So they were divided. Some called him a true prophet, some believed his words, some did not. So people were divided even after so much evidence. Teaching us this important principle. Evidence can only go so far in convincing people. Right? No matter how much evidence you can provide, other people, no matter what you do, they will still not believe. That's what we learn here. And we learn that everybody went home or went their ways and they left Nephi alone. Right? Standing there in the in the middle of everybody. Okay. And we learn that Nephi started walking towards his house. While going to, to his house, they say that uh, he was pondering upon the things which the Lord had shown unto him. So he was busy pondering upon these things. Right? And it came to pass that as he was thus pondering, being much cast down because of the wickedness of the people of the Nephites. Right? So he's pondering, but we, we also get to, to to understand the state of his mind that at this point he is in a way, you know, sad, he's hurt. Right? And the thing that hurts him or the thing that makes him feel down is the wickedness that he sees among his own people. And the reason that hurts him is he knows as a prophet of the Lord that what's the outcome of that? Where will they end up if they continue on this path? You know, I think it's a burden that prophets have to bear, you know, knowing and being able to see across and see the future and say, you know, it's like, you know, you're watching a car drive towards a wall, right? And you'll be like, if this guy does not hit the brakes at a certain point, he's going to hit the wall and, you know, he's going to to die. And just imagine you are able to see that in real time and you, you can predict what's going to happen and you know exactly what's going to happen. And you are given this opportunity to speak to this person before they get in the car because you know exactly what's going to happen if they do not do certain things. But they choose not to listen to you and they choose to get in the car and drive this car into the wall. And I think that's that's what was heavy upon him was that that ability or that burden that he had to carry, knowing the outcomes and doing all that he can to advise them and say, you cannot keep doing this. It's gonna lead you to a very bad place. And that's why he's feeling down at this point and because of the people's wickedness. Right? And it came to pass that he was, as he was thus pondering in his heart, behold, a voice came unto him saying, so the Lord understanding and knowing very well what Nephi is going through, right? He was able to comfort him at this difficult time in his life. That's why a voice came and spoke to Nephi. Right. And the first thing the voice says to him is to tell him that he is blessed. Right. So in a way, you know, he's down, he's hurt. Right. So it's trying to lift up his spirit and say, Nephi, you know, you're focusing on on the things that are not right in your life. But I'm trying to refocus you on what is right in your life. You are blessed. Okay, and he goes on to mention why he is blessed, right? So he says Nephi is blessed because he declared the word of God with unweariness. That's why he is blessed. Yeah, so just try to think how Nephi felt when he heard these words and, and he was reminded that his efforts you know the they made an impact he, you know they did not go you know because at this point i'm thinking he's feeling you know he's not doing much he's not achieving anything right but he's been reminded that you know you, you have done good work and the lord is he's, he's he's thankful for your efforts and you are blessed because of those efforts right so he declared the word of god with unweariness he has not feared men, right? He has not sought his life. And I think we can see here that he did not care about his life, right? 
he cared mostly about the people and doing all that he cared to help them to not go to this place you know where they they are hurting with with their choices right um he sought the will of god all right so he did not seek his own will did not do what what benefits him but he, he sought doing the lord's will all right and last and the last thing he did was he kept the lord's commandments and because of doing all those things the lord said to him what Thou art blessed, right? Because he did uh, all those things. And and then the Lord says, Now because thou hast done this with such unweariness, behold, I will bless thee forever. Now just imagine that, that he is told that forever, right, you are blessed. From this time until, until throughout your existence, you will be blessed because of the things you've done. That means the work he has done, it is of such importance that it, it, it has an impact throughout the eternities. And you putting yourself in his state of mind, the way he felt, he, he was not having any impact whatsoever and now he's told you are blessed forever right and i will make thee mighty in word and in deed in faith and in works yea even that all things shall be done unto thee to thy word wow think about it he's told that everything will be done by his word just imagine that kind of power where you can speak and things happen. Not just some things, but everything you say will be done the way you say it. If you say to someone, you know, you're gonna be taller, they become taller. You know, think about that, that gift, right? Okay, and the Lord then tells him why he's giving him such, because that's a lot of power for anybody to have, right? But the Lord tells him why, you know, he's been blessed with this power or this gift and for thou shalt not ask that which is contrary to my will. So the Lord trusts him so much that he says, I know that you will never do anything that's not my will. And it also gives us you know, an understanding on Nephi's character as a person. That he could not have done anything that's not according to the Lord's will. That's how righteous he was at this point in his life. There was no drop of selfishness where he would do things for himself but his whole life his whole being was dedicated to doing the lord's will and doing it the lord's way wow okay and verse 6 the lord says behold thou art, thou art nephi and i am god right and i think the lord says this to in a way to to help him understand that what he is saying it will come to pass you know because this is you know these are really really big uh, blessings and he's receiving all these amazing gifts all right behold i declare i declare it unto thee in the presence of mine angels all right that ye shall have power over these people so the lord says i'm god and i'm giving you these gifts and i'm declaring it in front of my angels that means they are witnesses that this will happen that you will have power over these people why because at this point nephi feels powerless because he did all that he can to try to teach them the truth to try to show them the right way but they are rejecting his words and the lord said to him you will have power over these people i think of the impact it might have had on nephi at this point and with everything that's happening around him Okay, and shall shall smite the earth with famine and with pestilence and destructions according to the wickedness of these people. So he would have power to to smite these people or to punish them when they are wicked, you know, with famine, pestilence, and destruction. Okay, behold, I give unto you power 
that whatsoever shall uh, whatsoever ye shall seal on earth shall be sealed in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And thus shall ye have power among these people. So that's what it means that you will have power among these people. That whatever he dis he seals on this earth will be sealed in heaven. That means whatever he seals here will be sealed into the eternities. And whatever he he loses or he puts apart will be that way into the eternities. So whatever he says, whatever he prophesies will happen, not just in this life, but right into the eternities. Right? And thus, if he shall say unto this temple, it shall be rent in twain, it shall be done. Wow. So he's told that you can even say to the temple, you know, let it fall apart and it will fall apart. Okay. And if he shall say unto this mountain, be thou cast down and become smooth, it shall be done. Now think of that power. Where you can look at a mountain and say, mountain be smooth, and that mountain becomes smooth. This is the power that Nephi was given. Right? And behold, if he shall say that God shall smite these people, it shall come to pass. So when he asked the Lord to punish these people or to you know the Lord will do it. Right? And now behold, I command you that ye shall go and declare unto these people. And thus saith the Lord God, who is almighty, except ye repent, ye shall be smitten even unto destruction. So he's told God, tell the people to repent. And if they don't, they will be destroyed. Because the Lord saith so. And now he has the power to also bring to pass that destruction. Right? And you now behold, it came to pass that when the Lord had spoken these words unto Nephi, he did stop and did not go unto his own his own house. So as soon as he learned this, say so he stopped. Because remember he was on his way to his house. He stopped. And he did not go home anymore. Right. Now, what does that teach us about Nephi and his dedication to to his call? Right? to a point that he's not even going to go home, he will continue working. Right? And but did return into the multitudes who were scattered upon the face of the land and began to declare unto them the word of the Lord, which had been spoken unto him concerning their destruction and they did not repent. So he went back and started teaching people the truth and inviting them to repent so that they be, they, they be not destroyed. And now behold, notwithstanding the great miracles which Nephi had done in telling them concerning the death of the chief judge, they did harden their hearts and did not hearken unto the words of the Lord. So we know that, you know, what happened with the chief judge and the prophecies of Nephi and how everything was fulfilled. There was so much evidence that you know, it's 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 beyond understanding that why would they not believe him? But still they did not believe him. Therefore Nephi did declare unto them the word of the Lord, saying, Except you repent, that saith the Lord, ye shall be smitten even unto destruction. So Nephi still continued to teach them and to plead with them that please repent so that you be not destroyed. And it came to pass when Nephi had declared unto them the word. Behold, they did still harden their hearts and would not hearken unto his words. Right? So even after the evidences, even after Nephi is teaching them, they still refuse to listen to him. But rather, now they decide to fight him. Right? And it says that, and did seek to lay their hands upon him that they might cast him into prison. So they're trying to capture him and take him into prison, right? And and behold, the power of God was with him, and they could not take him to cast him into prison, for he was taken by the Spirit and con conveyed away unto the midst of them. So when they were trying to take him to prison, the Spirit took him away, and they could not get to him, right? 
And it came to pass that thus did he go forth in the spirit from multitude to multitude, declaring the word of God, even until he had declared it unto them all, or sent it forth among all the people. Right? So listen to that word, that he declared the word of God unto them all. He declared the word of God unto them all. He taught all of them, all of them, the word of God. So I'm asking myself, how long did that take? And is Nephi not getting tired? That he went from multitude to multitude and declared the word of God. And to all of them. Right? And it came to pass that they would not hearken unto his words. Right? So they would not listen to him. Rather, they, would, uh, they began to be contentions. So they started, you know, arguing with one another. In so much that they were divided against themselves. So they, be they began to have these contentions. You know, some of them believed Nephi, some of them didn't. You know, and they started having these contentions. And began to slay one another with the sword. They started killing one each, each other with the sword. Right? And that's Elamin 10. Right, where I think for me what stands out is that many times we always think when people you know could just see miracles, when people could just be convinced then they would believe. But we can learn here that these people were given evidence that they could not dispute, but still they did not believe. These people were were taught by a prophet of the Lord multiple times and still they did not believe. Right? That's what we learn here. And many a times when we go out and share the gospel with the people, our role is not to convince them to believe. Our role is to give them the opportunity to hear the word and to consider the word. But ultimately it's between them and the spirit that will help them or make them believe. Right? Because you know, like what Nephi, what Alma taught, that other people are forced to believe, but it's better to believe of your own accord. Right? Um, and that's what we learn here. But also, other thing I learn is, you know, Nephi, his dedication, his commitment to the work of the Lord. It's, it's, um, I don't know, it's beyond my personal ability to comprehend how can a human being be that dedicated and give so much of himself to the building and upholding of the lord's kingdom i think it inspires me to to try to be better to try to dedicate myself more because i can learn from nephi that you know he's he's given of himself that we learn that he did not even go home but rather he taught all the people the word of God. All of them. And I'm asking myself, like, you know, that kind of energy, that kind of dedication. But also, it helps us understand his understanding of the importance of ensuring that nobody gets destroyed. Because he could see and he could fully comprehend what was going to happen to the people and he understood the urgency of the situation and it also helps us to understand the, the, you know the burdens that prophets have to bear and that's why it's so important that we always pray for our prophet and ask the lord to strengthen him and to really you know be with him but not just be with him but be with us to sustain him and to really learn his words and apply them 